Salutations, my name is Summer and this is Sterling Reads. Um, it's a dark and dreary day and I had some time so I thought I would go over everything that I've been reading and um, my plans and what I want to read. <laughs> I feel like I'm losing my voice now that I'm actually talking. Um, okay, so something that I finished that I don't really want to talk about yet because I would like to make its own separate video like I used to do years ago. And that's uh, The Winter of Our Discontent by John Steinbeck. Um, it's my eighth John Steinbeck to read. It is his final book. Uh, and I want to say it's third in line for me out of the eight. Um, I was really excited to read it, the whole thing with Reality Bites. And um, the main character, his name is Ethan. And um, yeah, so I think it's still number one is Grapes of Wrath. I mean, hands down, it's still one of my favorite books. And then The Moon is Down is number two. And then The Winter of Our Discontent. So uh, there's only one thing I didn't like about it. But like I said, I'll talk about it in another video. Um, something else I finished is, I mean, I finished a couple other things, but I'm not going to talk about everything. Um, but I did finish A Game of Thrones. I actually listened to it. It is a reread. I Maybe the fourth or fifth time that um, I've, I mean, I listened to it this time, but that I've read it. And he, I just love George R. R. Martin's writing. I love his characters. He does such of an amazing job. And I feel like more people should read him. I, I feel like there's a bit of snobbery about his writing, and I'm not for sure why. And I've heard a lot of people say, oh, you know, I mean to, I meant to read it. To, I can't speak today. I've meant to read it. But for some reason, they keep putting it off. And I just think his writing is so immersive. When he talks about you walking into the woods, you can feel the silence, the being watched, the whatever it is. Um, he's so good at describing those things. And he's funny too, and anyway, I absolutely loved it. And I plan to, um, I don't know if I'm going to read it on my Kindle, read it physical, or get it from the library and listen to it. I haven't decided, but I definitely want to move on to The Clash of Kings, which is the second book. Um, some things that I'm, oh yeah, there is something else here. <laughs> uh, I did finish The Rebels. This is the second book in the Kent Chronicles by John Jakes. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It is a drama. The cast of characters, how he kills people off left and right that you're attached to. Um, the relationships. Like, there is one character in here that is, like, so horrible. I mean, the things that he has done, the way he's lived his life. Um, and I'm, I kept thinking, how is this going to come into full circle because he is pretty good at tying things up. Uh, you know, there's a third book, of course, The Seekers, uh, which is in my car right now. And I haven't started it because I made the mistake of somebody asking me what it was about. And so I read the back of The Seekers and it is about a couple, like it keeps going down the family line, but that family line I am not really interested in. So I haven't, I haven't started reading it yet, but I will. And this was really good. I love historical fiction, how they keep bringing up like Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, you know, and all these other people who existed at the time. But during, this is during the revolution, the American Revolutionary War. Um, so yeah, I, I loved it. Um, some things that I have started and I've been reading just a little bit. I've been so tired lately. Um, and ever since Jennifer Brooks passed, which I didn't even want to talk about it, um, I set down the Brothers Karamazov off because like I couldn't, I didn't want anything heavy. Um, anyway, so I, I did pick up 
pick the Magic Mountain back up by Thomas Mann and I've only read a couple more pages and then I've set it back aside. Uh, it is a nice, quiet, calming type, slow read. Um, but yeah, I just keep reading a couple pages and I'll set it down. And then a couple days later, I'll pick it up and read a couple pages. But hopefully I'll get to that more and really get into it. Uh, something else that I'm reading on my Kindle, uh, that's The Ichabog by J.K. Rowling. Um, I, I'm glad I own it in physical also because I let my mom borrow it. I, I started reading it and then I said, oh mom, you really have to read this. You'll enjoy it. Because last year I read The Christmas Pig by J.K. Rowling from the library and then I ended up uh, handing it to her like, hey, you should read this. It's, it's really cute. So this is even better than The Christmas Pig. Um, I even think it's better than Harry Potter. She was writing this while she was writing Harry Potter and then she just stuck it up in the attic. And I always wonder about authors who do things like that. I got my Miss Sylvia in here who's wanting to hiss at everybody, so there may be an issue. I don't know. Um, but this was so good. And something else that she did when she brought this, she brought this out when the, the pandemic hit and kids were not allowed to, I mean, it was like such of a scary time where kids couldn't go to school, people weren't going to church or whatever it was, um, hospitals, uh, people couldn't visit their loved ones. It was just so heartbreaking, the things that people had to go through. And anyway, she brought this book back out and she put it online for free and she asked for kids to send in their illustrations of the book. And so it's like every chapter or so, you will have a child's illustration and they will describe like what it is that they drew. <laughs> and some of them are like such kids um, type illustrations. But then other times, um, yeah, I mean, some of them are so good, it's like, and it'll tell you the age and the uh, name of the child. So I'm over halfway. I've been taking this to work and reading it, like I said, on my Kindle. Um, but the kids, they did a great job. I think it was a wonderful thing for her to do. It is about, to me, it's like about corruption, about political leaders. I mean, let me think about this. I haven't, this is the thing I get on here talking and then I, I haven't really thought about it too much because I haven't finished it. But um, it reminds me of what people have done throughout history for their families to survive. Um, they may be told to keep something corrupt or underhanded, uh, a secret, so that they could get ahead um, and, you know, just straight out lie about things. And anyway, and that's kind of, like, I don't know how this is going to end, so I don't know. But what happened was there's a king and he ends up apparently seeing the Ichabod and getting scared away and all this stuff happens. But you know what? I shouldn't tell you <laughs> because I was really surprised by what happens um, in this so far. And I'm just not going to tell you, but it's, it's really good. And I'm hoping to actually meet the Ichabod. Oh, that was my fan church. He's been not feeling well. Okay, let's see. There's three more things I want to talk about. Um, I read the Foresight Saga. Uh, I say that. The book said it was just the bind up of the first three. Um, and then I thought I had the fourth, which is, you know what, if I'm getting that right, I don't know, I'm so tired. But um, the White Monkey is next. So I ordered this from the library and it's John Galsworthy. Galsworthy? Um, but a modern comedy. And it starts with a white monkey. So I don't know if this will finish. It has the white monkey, including a silent wooing. Silent wooing, that sounds interesting. The silver spoon, including passersby and swan song. So I don't know if that'll be it. I'm guessing not because it says the foresight. Yeah, okay. 
<laughs> I'm learning so much. This is the Forsyth Saga. Is The first trilogy is The Man of Property, which I read, In Chancery, which I read, and To Let, which I read. And so this is the second trilogy, uh, The White Monkey, The Silver Spoon, Swan Song, and then the end of the chapter is a third trilogy, which is Made in Waiting, Flowering Wilderness, and One More River. Good to know. Good to know, because it's kind of confusing. It's not like a straight out, it doesn't feel like it's a straight out series, and I haven't seen any kind of bind up where they have, I mean, but look how big this is. I guess it would be smart to separate them. Okay, so yeah, I wanna get back into the family and see uh, what the Forsyths are doing. Um, I'm doing a buddy read with Angie from, her channel used to be Literary Labors, and now I'm thinking that she changed it to the great big world or something like that. I will link her channel down below in uh, Deanna at Pato the Reader. I'll link her channel down below too. Anyway, we are reading uh, Cold Mountain by Charles Frazier. I love Charles Frazier. I have read everything of his except for The Trackers, which came out last year. I think it was last April and I haven't read it yet. But um, I... Uh, I love Cold Mountain. It is a slow paced read. I've read it a couple different times now. I also love the movie. Um, the copy that I read is the has the movie adaptation cover on it. Um, so it looks more beat up and battered than this one. But this one, I think I got like a Goodwill and it has someone else's writing all through it, but they stopped. So, I don't know what happened to this person, if they just didn't want to read anymore, but yeah, like 230 pages, they stop. <laughs> I was like, hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this with Angie and Deanna, and I believe, yeah, it will be their first time of reading it, and it's reread for me. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, this is a library book, so I need to hurry up and read it and get it back. It's Of Time and Turtles, Mending the World, Shell by Shattered Shell by Cy Montgomery. I'm really excited about this. So I will link the channel down below. And I, oh, it's so horrible, I cannot remember his name or his partner's name, but I love watching their videos and their dog, uh, which I can't remember his name either or her name. So you shouldn't even start talking. Anyway, I watched their video about their favorite reads of 23 and both of them had this on their list. So, and Cy Montgomery, I read The Soul of an Octopus, and I love anything that has to do with nature and all that. So, I have a feeling I'm going to learn a lot about turtles, and um, yeah, hopefully I enjoy it. So, I've been thinking a lot about uh, March of the Mammoths, and that's when I thought I would actually come back, because I know I'm, I'm not, I haven't been consistent with my video making. Um, March of the Mammoths is one of my favorite things. What do you call it? <laughs> in book two. And uh, I've been thinking about what I want to read. I read Mammoths all year long, but for some reason I still love March hearing about what everybody else is reading. And I get excited thinking about what Mammoth do I want to read? And I don't know, I have a couple of different books but I really think it's either going to be Don Quixote, Don Quixote, or um, A Suitable Boy by Vikram Seth. I read An Equal Music last year by Vikram Seth, and I did not care for the main character, but I really liked his love interest. So, and it was a good book. I'm thinking, and it's right, right there. And Don Quixote is over there. So they're both easy, easy access to get to whatever I choose. Um, I was curious if anybody has plans already. I know it's just starting to be February um, about March of the Mammoths. Uh, is there anything that you're reading now that you're really enjoying? Do you have an opinion about which book I should read for March? Or do you have anything about any of the books that I mentioned today? Uh, anyway, I hope to be back soon next time with like more energy and 
more light because it's so dark today. Um, but I had time, so I wanted to do this. And I miss you guys. Anyway, I hope everybody's having a nice day. Let me know what you're reading. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.